Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Technique Tuesday. This week we're gonna be looking at how to improve core strength and development of the abdominal muscles using the plank and a few variations on the same basic movement pattern. But before we get into that, let's have a quick look at the anatomy and biomechanics involved first. So with the plank, we're performing anti-extension where the muscles of the core contract isometrically to maintain a neutral spinal position. And you can think about it this way. If you were to let everything relax, your midsection would drop down and your lower back would go into extension. Extension. So to keep the back neutral, the rectus abdominis or six pack muscle, the transverse abdominis or TVA and obliques will all contract isometrically to keep the spine from hyperextending. So even though the plank is an isometric exercise, meaning the muscles aren't lengthening and contracting through a full range of motion like they would in a crunch or a leg curl, I still like to include it in a training program because the improvements in core stability seen here will have a high degree of carryover to heavy compound lifts like squats and deadlifts. Also, I think that for the best total core strength and development using a combination of weighted spinal flexion exercises such as crunches and both anti-rotation exercises like the half kneeling pal-off press and anti-extension exercises like the plank is best. Also, several researchers have theorized that it is core muscle endurance rather than maximal core strength that best combats spinal instability and lower back pain. So static core endurance exercises such as the traditional prone plank would be beneficial for this. And even though it isn't usually thought of as a muscle building exercise, planks can be very effective at stimulating hypertrophy of the abdominal muscles as long as progressive overload is being applied, which I think is the key thing that many people miss and we'll get to that here in a minute. So for the traditional plank, you want to assume a push-up position on a comfortable surface, positioning your elbows directly beneath your shoulders so that your upper arm makes a roughly 90 degree angle with the floor. And you wanna lift yourself up onto your toes so your full body makes a straight line from head to toe. To engage the abs more, you can think about pulling your elbows back toward your body to initiate that spinal anti-extension contraction. And in general, I recommend holding this position for three sets of 20 to 40 second holds. And once you're able to do that quite easily, which I think is a reasonable fitness standard as a beginner, then you have a few other options to continue applying progressive overload. Now, the first option is to simply extend the whole duration. However, this can make training both long and boring, so I almost never recommend it. You can also add external resistance by stacking weights on your lower back and glute area. However, this can be a pain to set up, especially if you're alone. And even with the extra weight on there, it can be fairly unchallenging as you get more advanced. And I'm also not a big fan of these two overloading options because they don't inherently improve muscle recruitment patterns on the plank itself. So let's take a quick look at what the EMG activation data has to say on this. So according to independently published results from Bohek, Behrens, and Buskies, the plank ranked pretty evenly for the upper abs, lower abs, and obliques. It's not outstanding for either, but it's pretty well-rounded when compared to other popular ab movements. But that's probably because the traditional front plank is actually a pretty easy exercise. As of 2016, the Guinness World Record for a plank hold is eight hours and one minute. So it isn't really surprising that you wouldn't see huge muscle activation levels with the standard plank. And in 2004, 14, a study led by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld found the same basic thing. The traditional front plank wasn't outstanding at activating the core. However, modifying the plank in two important ways led to significantly more activation of the upper abs, lower abs, and external obliques. The first modification was to extend the lever arm, essentially moving the elbows forward so that they're at the level of the eyes. Because this is increasing the distance from the hips to the elbows, the abs are gonna have to contract harder to prevent the spine from extending. The second modification is to squeeze the glutes hard to pull the pelvis into posterior pelvic tilt. And the best way to think of this is if you were to do a bikini pose where you pop your glutes out, you'd be performing anterior pelvic tilt. So you wanna do the opposite of that by pulling your glutes in, which of course According to the paper, will create force coupling of the hip extensors, so the glutes and hamstrings, and the abdominal musculature, which will have a strong influence on core muscle activity. So again, I generally recommend holding this version of the plank for 20 to 40 seconds for three sets. And once you reach the top end of that, you can make two more adjustments to make the plank even harder. Uh, first, you can bring the elbows in closer together, which is gonna narrow the base of support, further increasing core stabilization demands. And you can cue to simultaneously pull your elbows toward your 
your toes while pulling your toes toward your elbows. And if you perform this correctly, the natural tendency is for your hips to want to shoot up into the pike position. However, because you're keeping your glutes squeezed and maintaining that posterior pelvic tilt, your butt will stay down and your core will start burning like crazy. Now, personally, if I do all of these advanced cues at once, I'll start shaking within 10 or 20 seconds. Now, another good option you can do alongside the plank is an ab wheel rollout. According to a 2008 study from Udis and colleagues, out of four abdominal exercises tested, including the crunch, a supine double leg thrust, and side bridge, the ab wheel exercise came out on top for the rectus abdominis or six pack muscle. And when you think about it, an ab wheel rollout is essentially a sort of dynamic range long lever plank where the abs are contracting hard to prevent the spine from extending or dipping down. So one way to get progressively better at planks is to progressively increase the range of motion on the rollout over a training cycle. So you wanna stop the range of motion once you feel like you're no longer able to maintain that neutral lumbar spine position. And then gradually over time, as your core strengthens, you can increase the distance that you allow the wheel to move forward. Also keep in mind that ab wheel rollouts are an advanced exercise, so don't be discouraged if you have to start out with a shorter range of motion. And keeping a neutral spine position on these is always much more important than going all the way down just for the sake of it. So when it comes to the plank, I would say the most common beginner's error that I see is having the hips too high. Now, this is a lazy way of doing planks and it totally takes your core out of the movement. Now the simple fix here is to keep your glutes squeezed to pull the hips into a more neutral position. Another common error is essentially the opposite of this. So allowing the hips to sag down, putting the lumbar spine into an extended position. And this is another lazy way of doing the plank, also potentially more dangerous. And the fix here is to crunch down on the abs more, or you can use the cue to pull your elbows back toward your toes while pulling your toes up toward your elbows to pop the hips back up into neutral. When it comes to the rollout, a common error is to pull the wheel in with your arms rather than your abs. Now remember that you wanna initiate the movement using your core, having the wheel naturally come in as you crunch your abs more intentionally. So guys, that is all that I have for the plank. I hope you guys found it to be helpful. I don't yet have an ab specialization training program, but it's something I am hoping to bring to my website sometime soon down the road. Uh, in the meantime, I'd recommend checking out my Ab Science Explained video for a complete look at ab training. And if you guys are interested in taking your overall training, including ab training up a notch, I'd recommend checking out my nine week upper lower size and strength training program. It's designed for intermediate to advanced level lifters. Or if you're newer to the gym in your first year or so of training, I'd recommend checking out my fundamentals program uh, which is set towards developing a solid strength and size foundation first. Um, so I have both of those programs linked in the description box below if you guys are interested, and I'll put a button to my programs over here next to my head. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.